Ever since I built my CNC plasma cutter, I've been inundated with hundreds of emails from various companies basically asking me to review their products. I generally have no interest in these kind of deals, especially since a lot of these products are kind of questionable to say the least. Now that all changed when I got a message from Vivor, which is actually a company that makes all sorts of stuff. I've never been on their website. It's actually pretty fascinating. They make everything from tools to plasma cutters to laser cutters to like food processing stuff and storage containers. And I actually have quite a few of their products anyway that I just use that I've bought over the years anyway. So when they reached out and asked me to make a video on this uh, here plasma cutter. I was like, I can't say no to that. Now I should say that while well, Vivor did send me this plasma cutter, I'm under no obligation to say anything good or bad about it. It's all my own opinions and everything. So take that for what you will. Without further ado, this is the Vivor Cut 50P plasma cutter. The Vivor Cut 50P is a 50 amp non-touch pilot arc high frequency start plasma cutter. Like most of the cutters in this range, it's an IGBT inverter style cutter targeted towards the DIY crowd. It's a basic machine with one knob to adjust the amp settings and that's basically it. You can of course adjust the air pressure as well, but honestly I just leave that at 75 PSI and I never touch it again on any of my plasma cutters. Out of the box it comes with basically everything you're going to need to get going, assuming you have the proper power outlets and air supplies. One thing I did notice is that it comes with two barbed fittings for the pressure regulator, but pretty much everybody who would use this is going to want a standard air quick connector. A normal NPT air fitting is not included and you have to supply this yourself. This is probably because there are various standards for these fittings and if you're in the market for a machine like this, you probably already have a decent air compressor and you likely have the fittings to match your system. Assembly is pretty simple, only requiring two screws to secure the regulator to the back of the machine. They give you this long run of air hose, but you'll realistically only need about half of it. Try to loop it similar to how I did to prevent any sort of kinks in the hose. One thing to note is that the uh, Teflon tape that they supply is kind of crappy. Like, it's pretty wide for what it is, uh, which actually means it's wider than the threads of the fittings you're putting on here. So you're kind of going to have to trim it down a little bit anyway to make it fit properly and not cover up the air inlet hole. So I would just get a roll of regular Teflon tape you can get at the store. Um, any, pretty much any store with plumbing stuff is going to have it. It's way better. It's proper width and this is kind of just doesn't feel right. So this plasma cutter is, like many, dual voltage, either running on 110 with the included adapter or 220. If you want to do up to the max rating of 5 eighths of an inch, then 220 is an absolute requirement. The front panel is very simple, only having one knob for amperage control and a digital readout for the amperage. Your cutting torch is an AG60 style, which is nice because the aftermarket consumables are easy to find online and pretty cheap, especially compared to the consumables on the other plasma cutter that I have. The torch itself is, well, it's like any other plasma torch, and the 16 foot lead length is really nice to have. One of my biggest gripes is with the ground clamp. The clamp itself is, as they would say, an ground clamp. There's nothing special about it and it seems like it's fine, but it's severely limited by the six and a half foot lead. That's right, the ground lead is a full 10 foot shorter than the torch lead. Now I know grounding cables are expensive, but this short ground lead combined with the fairly short power cable means that unless your project is right next to the power outlet in your shop, or you have a big welding table that's pretty close to the outlet, you're going to have a difficult time getting to your projects. Of course, you can get longer power cables that can be hardwired in. You can make a ground cable a little bit longer. And of course, they do make extension cables that are for welders. But still, this is one of the problems you might have with buying a cheaper plasma cutter like this. So let's see what this thing can do. To start, I was working on a small project at home that required a simple cut of some eighth inch aluminum. And as expected, it worked completely fine. I only ran it at about 30 amps and at moderate speeds and it had absolutely no trouble cutting the piece. For the next few tests, I actually brought my plasma cutter into work to get access to the literal tons of scrap metal that we have in the shop. Shout out to Ameritrail Custom Boat Trailers for letting me use the shop after work and the scraps for this kind of testing. The first material I tried was some eighth inch thick steel angle, and of course it had no problem cutting through this. I actually went and took the guard off and cut it freehand to get around the inside of the angle that you couldn't reach with the guard on, and again it cut no problem. I guess that can tell you that even though it's not intended, you can drag the tip directly onto the material if you absolutely need to. Next up was some aluminum channel, which this top section I was cutting is actually 3 16 and again, it cut absolutely no problem. 
Aluminum's weird because it seems to be easier to cut when it's thin, but when it gets thicker, it just kind of gums up and doesn't want to cut properly. We do mostly aluminum trailers at work, so there's plenty of scrap laying around, but even the plasma cutters that we use at work tend to have a difficult time with really thick aluminum. Next up was some steel channel that actually was a quarter inch on its thickest part, and again, it went right through it, no problem. I'm not even trying to go slow or anything, I'm just trying to go at what speed feels right, and again, it cuts through basically no problem at all. Problem. No problem at all. Next, I did the same piece of that aluminum channel, but the flanges, which are about quarter inch thick, and it cut right through it, but it is a bit more of a rough cut. Again, this seems to happen with aluminum no matter what plasma cutter you're using. Ceaselessly rough with the, what is that, 3 8 aluminum? But it cuts through it, no problem. It's just kind of icky looking. I'll clean it up with a grinder though. Next up, I found a piece of eighth inch steel plate actually diamond plate and just kind of went over it quickly to make a little shape and again pretty much no problem at all with cutting something like this even at the speed I was going. I found a piece of some half inch steel and although you do have to go slow and it's a bit rough it does cut through it pretty much without any effort. Got most of the way through it. Not quite all the way, well, it went through all the way except for a couple spots. But, could easily finish it off like that, so. That's a pretty uh, decent cut for half inch. Finally, I found some small steel tubing that was about eighth inch thick, but you, I don't really show it, but this tube is actually pretty rusty. It was in the bin, it was outside for quite a while. And one of the advantages of a pilot arc start plasma cutter like this is that it doesn't need to scratch start with the material. Normally, if you are trying to scratch start, you have to have a clean surface or at least a decent surface in order to get that arc to start. But since this is a pilot arc, it can basically punch through paint or rust or oxidation without having any sort of problem. So if you work with materials that are painted or maybe galvanized or rusty, getting a pilot arc start plasma cutter like this will actually make your life a lot easier. Now, of course, I will say you should never weld or cut or essentially vaporize any sort of coating that's on a material. It puts out a ton of bad chemicals into the air that are definitely not good for you or your lungs. But if you're in a situation where you absolutely have to, having this type of plasma cutter is very advantageous for that. Now, some of you may be asking, can you use this machine for a CNC plasma cutter like the one that I built? And technically, yes, you could, but you're gonna have to commit a lot of time to shielding and grounding your whole machine to be able to compensate for the high frequency start that this machine has. Like I described in my CNC plasma cutter video, the cheaper handheld machines that use high frequency start, they work totally fine for handheld cuts. But when it comes to CNC, specifically, the high frequency can interfere with the motors and the control electronics of the CNC machine. So it's not really recommended unless you really already have a machine, already have a high frequency plasma cutter. And like I said, you gotta commit a lot of time to grounding and shielding all the wires and everything to make sure that it doesn't have any problems. The low frequency start that I ended up buying for the CNC has never had any problems with that. And that's why I bought it. But for a machine that is dedicated to handheld use like this, the high frequency start is not gonna cause any sort of problems. So what can I say? This machine just kind of works. Um, do I have a thousand hours on it? No, but everything that I threw at it, it cut without any sort of issue. It seems to do just fine in the applications that it's really made for. You know, the hobbyist grade, you know, at home person who just needs to cut some uh, steel or aluminum or stainless steel, things like that. If you're cutting half inch material or smaller in a hobbyist environment like what I do, that's what this is made for and it's gonna work just fine as far as I can tell. If you're doing really thick material and it's a production environment, well, it's probably not gonna last because it's not made for that. So if you're interested in the Cut 50P or any of their products for that matter, I've got an affiliate link in the description and in the comments that you can use to let them know that I sent you. You also can get a 5% discount code using the code VEVT5 at checkout. The affiliate link tells them that I sent you, but if you're not into that, you can still use the discount code to get the 5% off. But I really would appreciate if you clicked it, you know, 
if I sent you there, then that'd be cool. But if not, I get it. I want to thank Vivor for reaching out to me and giving me this opportunity to check out this plasma cutter because, like I said, I, I use a lot of their products in my day-to-day -day life anyway. I want to know if you've bought one of these or another one of the Vivor products uh, and you've had good, bad, or otherwise experiences with them, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Hopefully you found this video informative, at least to some degree, and if you did, give this video a like. It helps me out, of course. Subscribe if you haven't, or don't if you're not into that. That's cool too. I appreciate you anyway. I've got a couple interesting videos on the horizon, including some 3D printing stuff. I got a new 3D printer. Uh-huh. First time in forever. So hit the subscribe button if you are, uh, you know, excited to see that. Otherwise, I got nothing else really to say. So I appreciate you watching this video. And until the next one, I will see you all later.